I know sometimes we can get a little corny around here. Oh my goodness. Could you take a break That's to what? talk to them? No, it's not good. <laughs> That's a good corn. If you haven't be <laughs> <coughs> I just inhaled a kernel. <coughs> Let's try that again. If you haven't become a member of the family. No, no it's kind of cre it's creepy. <laughs> I like corny better. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy, that's me. And we're cooking up dishes straight from RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my beautiful wife's cooking blog that has well over 400 recipes and rising. Probably getting close to 500 now. We're almost there. We're Follow almost me. there. Um, we'll have to check because I don't want to be telling you people 400 when it's 500 now. I wouldn't want you to make that mistake. No, that I didn't do in the first 20 or 30 tapings of all this stuff. <laughs> Today... This episode is going to be very fast. Do y'all like corn? Everybody likes corn. I like corn. And if you don't like corn, I'll eat yours. And this is one fast way to do it. Slow way, but fast way to get it together in a crock pot. And all you need to do is take your slow cooker and toss in your corn just like that. Oh, son of a gun. The slow cooker has a metal top to it. <laughs> you know... Prior to the taping, <laughs> we just talked about the fact that I hadn't burnt myself in a while. And as you could tell, that was not staged and that hurt. So, safety first. If you have one of these kinds of you slow don't cookers, like that when you never then have. make sure if it's got a metal handle that you don't put your hand directly on it when it's hot. <laughs> um. Okay, take two. <laughs> You want to take your corn to begin with and shuck it, of course, because you don't want all people to look in your corn and go, oh, shucks. <laughs> After you've shucked your corn, toss it in the bottom of a slow cooker and put in one quarter cup of water. Now, um, over the course of us cooking this, we ended up using a half cup, so kind of watch that. You want to make sure it doesn't dry out on the bottom. You're not here to fry your corn. You just want to kind of boil it, steam it. steam it. You're steaming yeah. it in your slow cooker. And then once you've got that done, we'll come back to those. You want to put your little topping on the corn. Now, this is very, very good. You want to take some parsley. It says in the recipe that you need three tablespoons of fresh parsley that's been minced. So I figure, there you go. <laughs> I don't know how to measure up parsley. It'll be all right. <laughs> so I just use that much. But you're going to chop it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not just going to throw that on corn. That would be silly. <laughs> so as I'm chopping it up, I'll tell you about the rest of the ingredients you also need to make sure you're watching you <laughs> the knife as you're cutting. <sighs> hey honey, do you remember what's yeah. in this recipe? We need a fourth of a cup of melted butter. I believe a tablespoon of uh, chives. We're using freeze dried because our grocery store didn't have fresh. Um, and a tablespoon of lemon juice. To which I forgot, so he's having a panic attack because he has Can't. water posing as lemon juice. Pretend. <laughs> cannot tell Pretend why. <laughs> this is lemon juice, except... Oh, Michael! No face. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking, you I'm chopping. To replace that. <laughs> and then salt and pepper to taste. That's right. Simple ingredients, and it's just... It's very To nice. make it to make it even better corn. Corn's good by itself, but when you add some parsley and butter and a little salt and some chives to it, it spices it up a little bit. Now, if you use freeze-dried uh, chives, you're gonna wanna add them to either your, your lemon juice or your fake lemon juice of your tablespoon of water so that they can clump back in. That's what I was trying to tell. You need to use, measure, dear. How much was in there? A fourth of a cup. A fourth of a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a tablespoon. <laughs> Zach science going on back. I think that's way more than a tablespoon. <laughs> All right. There you tablespoon go. of water, lemon juice, <laughs> and then, all right, I've got my parsley all chopped up. Oh! Just kidding. Oh my kidding. gosh. <laughs> you are rotten. I was 
the cows my dad got to get me Oh, dude, well, I just want to see the look on anybody's <laughs> face out there that jumped as big as my wife did, because that was funny. I'm sure you didn't I can't it. wait to see the comments <laughs> below on this video. You're a jerk. <laughs> You didn't hear what I said. What'd you say? I said I was wondering how my deck was going to get finished if that happened. Oh. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> All right. Pars parsley is chopped up fully. The parsley is fully chopped up, not partial. <laughs> not partial parsley. I, I, might, I would almost call that minced. There. Okay. It, it, well, it's supposed to be minced. Oh, I think. Let's see. It says it minced. Minced. I minced it. Good. And then you have your chives. How much? One tablespoon of fresh chives. <gasps> oh. You might add some more <laughs> lemon juice. <laughs> boy, oh boy. I'm sorry. I'm a little tired. <laughs> I've been building my wife a deck to go around our pool while I'm on vacation this week. And... I'm surprised I really didn't cut my finger off just then. So you need one tablespoon, right? Yes, one tablespoon you're, of fresh chives. You're gonna stick to that, babe. Huh? You've got a wet spoon that you're putting dry things. It'll be right. Trust me, I'm a professional. <laughs> one tablespoon oh. of chives. <laughs> and he's. The reason he's putting it in the water or lemon juice is because they're freeze dried. Yep, we're gonna hydrate them. Give them a little drink of water, bring them back to life. All right, put that back on there. And your lemon juice, your fresh parsley, your chives, salt and pepper, and let's see, what is this? One quarter cup of melted butter, which is also known as a half stick, and in a mixing bowl. Actually, I'm going to do that last. We'll put our parsley in there, about three tablespoons, or however much that is. That's one, two, three. Yeah, it's about three tablespoons. Your rehydrated chives. And lemon juice. And lemon juice. <laughs> He's so relieved that I told you. That it wasn't lemon juice. I was going to tell him. <laughs> and then your butter right in there. Oh. And then I'll put the salt and pepper on top of the corn when I'm done. And just mix that up like that. Ooh, it smells really good. That's going to smell really good. That's going to taste really good on the, corn, on the corn. And then take your corn. Couldn't say something I sooner. I tried. That's, that was payback for me acting like I cut my finger I off. I guess. Take your corn, put it in a bowl, just like that. And then take your stuff, your mix, and put it right over the top of the corn. Clean up your workstation a little bit. And then toss your corn in your stuff. Just like that. Don't forget your salt and pepper. Oh no, we won't forget that. I probably won't use up all of the parsley because there's probably about nine tablespoons there. <laughs> but that's okay. It's going to give a little flavor, but it's going to make it really pretty. I mean, corn's, corn's pretty. It's yellow, a little white in there. But when you add some more green to it. Well, it's got a good flavor. Yeah. Too. I like it on potatoes when you do your parsley potatoes. Mm -hmm. And then make it all pretty in a bowl. Just like that. salt oh all God. over the kitchen oh my word Could and you then if you if you want <laughs> some pepper you can I don't I like salt on there but I don't care for pepper it's still really hot <laughs> you 
You didn't give me those little thingies that you put in the ends of corn. There's no real way to blow on it. <laughs> Don't no, blow it just, on all it of it. It blows the <laughs> parsley off. All right, here we go. Test out the corn. You like? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's buttered corn. Yeah. The chives bump it up a notch. The parsley does too. I bet the lemon juice really would have too. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> But even without lemon juice, that's really good. You can always pop all this back into your crock pot to just keep things a little warm. Like if you're having a cookout, it's a good way to keep moisture in with it without it sitting in the water. I want to take this time to take a survey with y'all. When you eat corn on the cob, how do you eat it? Now I don't mean, I mean some people will like take a knife and cut it off, there's those people. But then are you one of those that does like a typewriter? Oh my word. I got. There's no not messy way to eat corn on the cob. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you more one of the ones like the, like this, do it around? You know what I mean? Like a. Is <laughs> that a chipmunk? Or yeah, like a chipmunk. <laughs> what about? Which way do you eat your I corn? I use a corn zipper. Do you know what I'm talking about? You got, where's an aisle? Show it to me. Uh, it's probably in that drawer right with. Fire. We weren't prepared for that. <laughs> well, no. Mm, so, oh, no, that's not a corn zipper. That's a cheese grater. Oh, you're dropping well, corn. I'm dropping corn in my drawers. <laughs> and I can't get it out. I'll clean that up later. Oh. Right now, I'm going to continue to eat my corn. As I say, thank you well, all. Well, tell them what a corn zipper is. Oh, I'm is. supposed to tell you what a corn zipper is. A corn <laughs> zipper, well, it zips the corn off of the cob. You know how... Like it's kind of like a, a vegetable peeler. Yeah, you know you can take a knife and do that down your corn. Well, this the corn zipper. If we could ever find it, we'd show it to you. But well, it's on the side. It's on the site. So check out your corn zipper. Check your zipper, and <laughs> and it just takes it and it goes meow, meow, meow. It doesn't make that sound. I'm making that sound, <laughs> but it just it zips the corn right off of the cob, right down to the little nub at the end. But then it doesn't cut the cob into it. So it's, it's perfect. It's really good if you like your corn off of the cob. I prefer my corn on the cob, and I'm just going to keep eating it because it's really good. That's buttery. Well, I guess I should say bye now. Oh my goodness, you have parsley in between your teeth. <laughs> oh, it went away. Yeah, it's him. <laughs> that was cute. There's something to do with you. <laughs> no, no, thank you. For watching another episode of Cooking Chris's Dishes, where you'll see corn in my beard, <laughs> and parsley in my teeth, and uh, if you have not become a member of our little Crock-Pot family, join now. All you have to do is subscribe down below, and uh, by becoming a subscriber to the channel here at youtube.com slash MikeyGood, I know there's parsley in my teeth, I can feel it, <laughs> uh, it'll also set you up to possibly win cookbooks and other giveaways that we're going to do in the future. And I'm talking to you with this piece of corn that's now flapping out of my mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's no couth way to eat corn on the cob. Um, but also, if you would, uh, check us out at RecipesThatCrock.com as well as on Facebook at RecipesThatCrock and at Good Old Tunes with Good Old Boy uh, where we will share music as well as these recipes and other fun things from the family. Uh, we want to thank you guys again for watching. You keep watching and we will keep cooking and all will be well. Bye. I admire like a typewriter. <laughs>